Alice Alive, and today I have Deborah Le- LeBlanc. I can't do French. I mean, it's... It, you did favorite. great. You okay. did great. That, that was all right. And you write paranormal suspense. Yes. And you just did your first foray, foray into paranormal romance. Yes. And, and there's a comfort level that's not quite there yet for you, or will uh, be? What well, wasn't comfortable for me, I think, was what language can you use? Uh-huh. You know, when describing certain scenes. Uh-huh. Uh, how far out there can you get? Or how much do you need to pull it back? I had a great time doing it. Um, it was, you know, I, I didn't have, I never have to do research on really the paranormal because I've done it for so long. I had to do research for romance, which was <laughs> funny. Isn't that funny? <laughs> so, but it was a lot of fun. I found myself getting, really getting caught into it because most of my books are character driven anyway. Mm-hmm. So just getting that whole romance element going between, um, you know, the hero and the heroine was, it was really interesting. I had a great time. And it's always fun to do something new and different. Something oh, yes. you haven't done before. And now you were telling me earlier that you also are a paranormal investigator. Yes. That you used to embalm people. Mm-hmm. That you have laid in a casket for research purposes. Yes. And I mean that's... I was locked in a casket. Locked. In, mm-hmm. Not just laid in one. No. You had to have the door, the locked thing closed. Mm-hmm. How long were you locked in there? 15 minutes before I realized I was running out of air. It was sealed. It was a sealed casket. Oh dear. Now why would you do this? I had a, I had a secondary character that was locked in a casket. He was trying to escape uh, from something trying to kill him. And he's locked in this casket and I've worked with around caskets because mm-hmm. I've been in funeral service for a number of years. But I began to realize I had no idea how much leg room he had, you know, to kick the lid or to even lift up with his hands. Just how dark is it in there? Uh-huh. What does he smell? And even though he was a secondary character, that really bugged me. It's not like, you know, you would know if yeah. I if I, I could pull something out of my imagination, but uh-huh. it was just too critical a turn in the book. <clears throat> I had a friend of mine who owned a funeral home and who knew me well. So, and I trusted him. And I said, ah, I have a favor to ask. <laughs> uh, so when I, I was locked in there and you know, we had signals. Yeah. Uh, if you hear me beating to. on the side of the casket, open the door, open the lid, Please. open the lid. But um, now that's going a little far for your craft. It was, a, but it was, a, it's a great story. <laughs> it is a great <laughs> story. Say, it's a great story. <laughs> and the scene, after I wrote the scene, uh, I'd, I'd written the scene before uh, being locked in the casket, mm-hmm. and it read kind of flat, but I, it didn't after. Oh, I bet it didn't, because you had that real life experience. I mean, I don't know too many authors that can say they've done that. <laughs> and like you say, nobody would have known any different. That's true. But, but, it's great to be able to say now, uh, I mean, I was not really afraid of death before, but right. even less now. The mattress in that casket was even more comfortable than the one on my bed. <laughs> well, it should be as, a, as expensive as those caskets <laughs> are. It That's should be right. really, really comfortable. I just tell my girls, keep it on the, you know, do an up, uh, make sure it's an upgrade. Yes. You know, mahogany, <laughs> preferably. But it was really comfortable. Oh, that is the so fact funny. that you can't breathe or see, you know. Well, you don't want to be really locked in there. I mean, for don't try this at home is what, uh, what no, we're saying. No, 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 because uh, you know, funeral. One thing we didn't realize is that funeral directors lock these caskets before they're interred. Mm-hmm. They don't have much experience unlocking them. Oh. And they're unlocked with an Allen wrench. And all I kept hearing once I kept beating on the casket was this click, click, and nothing would open. Oh. And I could just see the headlines in the local paper. <laughs> Author dies, you know, for the sake for of her novel. craft. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and when it finally clicked open, and I was, because I, I was jamming, and there were a few expletives flying by this time, you know, get me the heck out of here. And I'm pushing up on the lid, and finally pops open, I hear click. And at the same time, I pushed and that sucker flew open. Oh, I bet it did. I, what is your problem? I mean, I popped up like <laughs> the local ghost would have, you know, just right under, what is your problem? And he said, I was so nervous because you were beating on it that obviously he was fumbling with the lock. Yeah. Oh, oh no. my gosh. 
Uh, now that does make for a really great story, and you do the paranormal investigations. Yes. And I was telling you earlier, I love ghost hunters. Mm -hmm. Not so much one of the other ones, but we won't talk about that. So, how do you do? How do you get your phone calls? How do you find out where you're going to go to investigate? I hunt with a lot of different groups around the country. Uh -huh. um, there is one in Louisiana that I hunt regularly with, Louisiana Paranormal Studies, and. They'll usually contact me if they have a real interesting case. Um, there was one recently where an elderly woman was, her bed, no, mm, her, she claimed her bed was shaking and levitating and that someone was pinching her and, you know, attacking her right. in her sleep. And, you know, she was like 80. You hear these things and you have to take it all with a grain of salt until you get there and until you start seeing some really weird things going on. I'm not a demonologist, and right. there are a lot of paranormal investigators out there that once ghost hunters came out, everybody became a demon hunter. Well, yeah. a lot of it is psychological in nature. Uh -huh. This was not, and I know when I need to back the heck up and go get help. Oh, so it was real, that was huh? it, oh yeah, oh. it was the real deal. That has to be really scary. Now, you told me you were going to go to, tell, tell me again, where was it that you're doing next? Eastern State Penitentiary. Okay, I thought you said a, a penitentiary. Yeah, it's, um, in fact, I think, I don't know if Ghost Hunters, I know the other one that we were uh -huh. talking about, the other side, did go there. Dude. Dude. But we won't say thing. Dude. <laughs> uh, that's rooster head for anybody, you know, we're, but he loves that stuff. I know this guy. He loves it. That's how, that's how they get their ratings. Oh, yeah. So uh, I'm anxious to go out there. We're going to try to do it live streaming. The challenge that we have is such, it's such a huge facility. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, trying to get that online connection to stay static is, is really going to be a challenge. But I really want to live stream it. And when so are you people going? can experience November 11th oh. and 12th. Two days, not one, two, oh, two. You're spending the night? Yes. Oh, you are one daring woman. I just, if you're going to live a life, you just as soon give it all you've got. That's how I feel. Well, and with that, we'll say thank you so much for joining us. Joining us. It's been a pleasure having you here. Oh, it's been a great fun. Thank you for having me.